Hi, this is Ian X04, and today we're going to build an extremely simple yet powerful wither skeleton farm that requires no spawn proofing, no wither roses, and no piglins. And yet this farm cranks out about 135 skulls per hour. And that means that you get an equivalent of one beacon every 80 seconds of using this farm. Not only that, the build itself is very simple, taking as little as 25 minutes to complete using a modest set of materials. All you need is what's shown on screen, in addition to a nether fortress inside a soul sand valley or a warped forest. The nether bricks that you see on the material list can just be harvested straight from the fortress itself, so this isn't even something that you have to gather beforehand. For example, this one nether brick column has enough blocks for the entire build. The special mobs that you'll find inside another fortress include blazes, zombie piglins, magma cubes, the occasional skeleton, and of course wither skeletons. All these mobs normally spawn within the fortress structure itself, but you can create artificial conditions outside of the fortress structure where these mobs can spawn as well. You just need to place nether bricks within the bounding box of the nether fortress, and all the fortress mobs, including weather skeletons, can potentially spawn on top of them. The bounding box of a fortress is just the smallest box that holds the entire fortress structure. And since fortresses commonly have these long hallways extending out to its fringes, the bounding box for the fortress is typically huge, much bigger than the fortress itself, which gives you a lot of flexibility in where the farm can be built. Right now, I'm using a mod to show you the bounding box for this particular fortress, just so that you can see an example of what a bounding box for a fortress can look like. Putting the spawning platform of your farm near the top of the bounding box lets you set up an AFK spot high above it so that no part of the actual fortress structure is within 128 blocks of the player, which completely eliminates the need to spawn-proof the fortress. You've probably noticed that soul sand valleys and warped forests are naturally desolate biomes in the nether. The game uses a special mechanic to limit the number of spawns that occur here, and as a result, so few mobs appear that you don't really need to spawn-proof these areas at all, as long as the farm is at least 100 blocks away from any other biome. The farm has a spawning platform of nether bricks, letting blazes, zombie piglins, magma cubes, ordinary skeletons, and wither skeletons to potentially spawn here. We use a regular spacing of wall posts to prevent magma cubes from spawning, since they require a 3x3 open space in order to spawn. Even the small magma cubes don't have enough room to spawn here. Turtle eggs in the corners of the platform lure the zombie piglins beyond 128 blocks of distance from the player, which makes them despawn. The iron golem attracts the attention of all types of skeletons, so we use repeaters to screen the eyes of the iron golem in the middle. This means that the occasional ordinary skeleton that spawns here is too short to see the iron golem, so it doesn't shoot the arrows that might accidentally miss and start a firefight with blazes instead. Wither skeletons, on the other hand, are just tall enough to see the iron golem over the repeaters, so they're lured to the portal next to the golem. This portal takes the wither skeletons to a bridge in the overworld that's built high in the sky and has a nether portal on each side. One portal is slightly lower than the other, so this is the one that the wither skeletons arrive in when coming from the spawning area, since it's closer in altitude. After being teleported, mobs require 15 seconds of cooldown before they can go through another portal again. So we use the constant stream of new weather skeletons to slowly shove the crowd towards the higher portal. This higher portal feeds the wither skeletons into a killing chamber right by the player, who stands directly over the spawning area, so that it's just within the 128 block spawning sphere around the player. Alright, now let's talk about finding a good build site. You'll need a fortress in a soul sand valley or warped forest, and your farm will need to be at least 100 blocks away from any other biome. If you know your seed, you can use chunk base or other utility to find a fortress in the middle of one of these biomes. If you don't know your seed, you'll have to go exploring. You can look for a soul sand valley or warped forest by flying around with elytra, or you can travel by horse or elytra on the nether roof as a quick and safe way to scout for new soul sand valleys and warped forests. Soul sand valleys are particularly easy to spot from the nether roof because the sky turns dark teal in color when you enter one. The name of the biome also shows up on the F3 debug screen. To get a horse from the overworld to the nether roof, build a portal in the overworld and record its X and Z coordinates before going through. Once in the nether, break the portal that you just came through and work your way up until your feet are at Y121, and then dig a short tunnel to explore overhead for a bedrock block at Y126 or Y127. The debug screen has the targeted block information on the right side of the screen so that you can figure out the Y coordinate of the block that you're looking at. 
place ladders running all the way up to the bedrock block, and hold down both the forward and jump keys at the same time. Throw an enderpearl straight at the ladder as you continue to hold down both keys, and you'll go through to the other side of the bedrock while taking a little bit of damage. Now take the x and z coordinates that you recorded earlier, divide each by 8, round down, and build a nether portal at this location. Activate it, go through, and ride your horse into the portal and dismount so that the horse teleports. Now go through the portal again yourself, and you should find your horse on the nether roof. When you find a biome that you want to explore, build and activate a portal and record its coordinates in case that you want to come back here, for example to get your horse. Set down TNT next to the portal and then step in. While you're waiting to teleport, light the TNT. Don't worry, you'll finish teleporting before the explosion. Once you're in the overworld, throw a junk item through the portal that you just came through. You should see it disappear as it touches the portal. This item reloads the portal in the nether and lets the TNT finish exploding, which deactivates the portal. Now throw a second junk item through the portal. This one should pass right through, which confirms that there isn't any active portal in the nether to link to. Step into the portal, and the game will have to create a new portal in the nether, this time under the nether roof, so that you can explore this biome for a nether fortress. If you don't find a fortress, go back up to the roof again using an ender pearl, and repeat the process, taking care of how you travel so that you don't backtrack over areas that you've covered previously. I'll have some advanced tips on searching for a fortress this way in the video description, so be sure to check it out if you want to learn more. Once you find a fortress in the right biome, you'll need to figure out the approximate limits of its bounding box. It's not that hard. Just explore the fortress and create a list of coordinates for all the dead ends of hallways or other structures that might be at the edges of the fortress. Also search for the upper Y limit for the bounding box by exploring the highest structures and their rooftops and recording the Y level of your feet while you're standing on the highest nether brick blocks. When you're done making your list, look for the largest and smallest X coordinates that you recorded, and also look for the largest and smallest Z coordinates. The spawning platform for the farm can be located anywhere within these ranges for X and Z values. Now take the largest Y value that you recorded and subtract 1 from it. This should be the Y level of your feet when you're standing on the spawning platform. Once you find the general location that you want for the farm, press F3 and G to bring up the chunk borders, and then find the intersection of four chunks that are all within the X and Z range of the bounding box, and at least 100 blocks away from any other biome. This intersection will mark the center of your farm. Place four chests around this intersection for your future iron golem to stand on, and then build out a 30 by 30 nether brick platform centered on the chests. This will be one block shy of filling up the four chunks in each direction. If any terrain is in your way as you build the platform, just carve away the terrain so that the platform has at least three blocks of air over it, which will give the wither skeletons just enough room to spawn. When you're done, place a wall post one block diagonally away from the corner of this platform, and add a wall post every three blocks along its edge. When you're done with one side, you should have ten wall posts, evenly spaced and symmetric on the platform. Repeat this for the other sides of the platform, and then fill in the grid, and put turtle eggs on top of the wall posts in the corners. Stand on the chests in the middle of the platform and press F3 to check which way that you're facing. Surround the chests on the north, east, and west sides with walls and add 10 solid blocks at eye level. Leave the south side of this room open. Place two iron bars against the north side of the room and add one more iron bar on the east side. Spawn an iron golem and lead or push the golem into the room and then seal it inside by finishing the fourth side of the room. Add four obsidian blocks at eye level on the side that you just finished, and put another layer of walls surrounding the golem, with four slabs over each of the north, east, and west sides, skipping the corners. Add four stairs and two slabs in front of the obsidian, and surround the golem with twelve repeaters. Then add bottom slabs over the repeaters and fill in the 4x4 roof.
Finish building a six-wide portal frame on top of the obsidian, with slabs on top to prevent spawning. Record your X, Y, and Z coordinates near the middle of the portal. This is critical information that you'll need later. Activate the portal, but do not go through. It's very important that this portal remain unlinked with any portal in the overworld while you're building the farm. Now leave the spawning platform and work your way up to the nether roof, just like before, and dig a short tunnel with your feet at Y121 to look overhead for a bedrock block at Y126 or 127. Run ladders up to the bedrock and throw an enderpearl at the ladder while holding down both forward and jump keys. Go to the X and Z coordinates that you recorded for the portal in the spawning area. Add 125 to the Y coordinate and pillar up so that you can place a glass block with your feet at this Y level. Press F3 and G to bring up the grid lines and you should see the intersection of four chunks, just a couple blocks to the north. This is the center line for your farm where the golem is located. Bridge out on glass blocks and expand the platform to 6x6 in size so that it's centered with the farm. I've marked the AFK spot with red stained glass blocks, just for reference, but you don't need to do this if you don't want to. Go back to the pillar and go up on four glass blocks. Bridge out two blocks towards the AFK spot and build a portal frame with slabs on top. Jump down to make the killing chamber out of glass blocks. Add two bottom slabs for mobs to stand on and two trap doors overhead. Go back to the pillar and add four ladders to get back up, and add two glass blocks to make a small platform. Now bridge out 18 blocks in the other direction and add another portal with slabs on top. This one serves as the entrance and exit for the farm. Block off the back side of it so that you don't accidentally stumble off, and then light the portal. Go back to the portal for the killing chamber, stand inside the frame, and record your X, Y, and Z coordinates. Block off one side of the portal opening with a door and a wall post, and then activate the portal to go through. Once you're in the overworld, destroy the portal that you just came through. Now multiply the X and Z coordinates that you recorded by 8, and pillar up at this location, until your feet are at just one level lower than the Y coordinate for the portal at the killing chamber. Press F3 to orient yourself, and bridge out on 10 solid blocks to the south, and then add an obsidian block at the end. Build a frame for another portal so that the portal is three blocks wide on the inside, instead of the usual two. You don't want mobs that teleport here to fall off, so block off the far side of the portal opening with a solid block, a wall, and a solid block. Widen the bridge to three blocks and add rails at eye level. Place an obsidian block on top of the pillar, and then build another portal frame that lines up with the first one on the other side, except for that this one is just one level higher in altitude. Place three slabs next to the portal opening so that mobs will automatically go up a block when shoved towards the portal. Ignite the portal and go back to the lower portal and place a line of three cobwebs as shown. Light the lower portal and then use it to get back to the killing chamber. The farm won't start working until you drop down to the AFK spot because the spawning platform is too far away. Once you get into position to activate the farm, it'll take a couple of minutes for the overworld bridge to fill up, and then you'll start to see wither skeletons in the killing chamber. The ideal weapon for killing mobs is a sword enchanted with Sweeping Edge and Looting 3, but any weapon will technically work. Looting 3 more than doubles the drop rate for the skulls, and Sweeping Edge kills all of the mobs much more quickly. Just remember to attack about once per second so that the sweep attack has a chance to charge. Once you have a few skulls, you can use them in your inventory to filter the drops from the farm. Place a skull in a few of your inventory slots, and fill in every other available slot in your inventory with something else that you might want to pick up from the farm, like coal or bones, or the occasional blaze rod. Anything that you don't pick up in inventory, like stone swords, will just despawn in 5 minutes. For long AFK runs, you can use an auto-clicker or macro to attack about once per second, and aim your mouse to the left or right so that you aren't attacking the empty space that can form between skeletons in the killing chamber. 
If possible, also set your auto clicker or macro to hold down the right mouse button and put food in your offhand so that you don't starve. This farm should have no issue working in single player mode or if you're the only player on a server. But if there are other players on the server, you'll need to either make sure that none of them are in the overworld, or you can have an alt account or friend wait in a safe location by the bridge with a block overhead to prevent phantoms. This player's presence simply ensures that the wither skeletons don't have a chance to despawn as they cross the bridge. Just make sure that the player in the nether stays on the upper platform near the door while this player gets into position, so that a horde of wither skeletons don't attack them on the overworld bridge. And when you're done with the farm, maybe split the skulls that you get with your friend as a way to say thanks. Earlier in the video, I mentioned that I'll have some advanced tips for finding nether fortresses in the video description, so go ahead and check it out to learn more about this, and also to find some additional tips, frequently asked questions, and corrections that I might need to make. I hope that you've enjoyed this video, and I hope that it gets you more beacons, mob switches, wither roses, and coal than you'll ever really need. Thanks for watching. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm.